Welcome to this video. I'm Ingo from Rose Travels and next to me is, well, next to me is the Be More Brazen coffee brewer, but next to the Be More Brazen coffee brewer, there is Joe Bem, the inventor of the Be More Brazen. Joe, great to have you here. It's good Thanks to be here. It's good, it's good to be in Switzerland. Never been. It's a beautiful country. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you for having me. Sure. Really nice to have you here. And once you're here, we are taking the opportunity to talk more about the Be More Brazen coffee brewer, a machine where I think uh, it's really an innovative, a great coffee brewer, and we should really share the, the, the beauty of this machine. Yeah, I think what, you know, as, as a small manufacturer, and what we've developed is a coffee brewer that's going to give the consumer what they want versus what the machine's going to deliver. And, and no other brewer will do that. You uh, have full control over what you want from your coffee. Can you tell a bit more about this? When you say you have full control over what you want on a coffee, what exactly can you control in this machine? Well, what we did is when we first came up with the idea for the, the brewer, we wanted to have a variable temperature coffee brewer because coffee extracts differently at different temperatures. And so we wanted to give people a, a range of temperatures to work with so that if you were looking for, let's say if you're using a darker roast that is a more full-bodied coffee, you can go to a higher temperature and get the richness and you can get the chocolate. Or if you're dealing with a, let's say an Ethiopian, you lower the temperature, you're gonna get more fruit out of your cup and it's gonna be a sweeter cup. So you can design the cup according to your own desires. That's what we were looking for. So you can then really control the temperature of the water in the brewer, something that we all know from barista or from brewer's cups, from, from professional baristas, they're always controlling the temperature of the water. And now this machine can do it as well. Well, that, that's the beauty of what we've done with the brazen, is we allow you to control what you want. Um, we've seen it for eons with espresso, but you never see it and haven't seen it and still don't see it other than with the brazen, full temperature control for a brewer. And again, it, it's going to depend upon your taste. So you can design the cup the way you want it or control it as you see fit. And how do you make sure that the temperature is always accurate? Because in a brewing system, there is so much waste the water has to flow through. One of the things that we understood, and, and my background is semiconductors, is every electronic component has what we call tolerances. And look at any data book or anybody that's building other products that have temperature control, they'll all say plus or minus generally 2%. Now, if you're, you'll have to bear with me, I do a Fahrenheit brain. If you're doing 200 degrees, 2% 2 means it could be 196 or 204. That's an eight degree spread. So what we did is we developed a system to where when you first set the brewer up, and it's the only time that you have to do it, is you calibrate all the components. So we have you put some water in it, you bring it to a boil, and the system recognizes that boil point, and at sea level, that's 212 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius, and with as you rise in altitude, that boil point changes. We built in code that will allow you, or allow the system, to recognize different boil points and adjust according to make sure all the electronic components are accurate. We are all about accuracy. Um, even one of our competitors has at once told me that we're the most accurate brew system in the world for temperature control. Mm, that's really interesting. Okay, so these systems, they can really lose a bit on accuracy. And with the calibration system that you have got within the system, you calibrate it so that you are always consistent. That's correct. What we're trying to do is actually, if, if we say, and again, Fahrenheit brain, so excuse me, if we say 200 degrees, we're going to be within half of 1% on accuracy. So at most, we're going to be at 191 or 201. So you are really looking at a very small range on accuracy for that, for that particular product. This is one of the reasons the brazen's been chosen to do, be used, I should say, in competition for, for roasting. Because this way, anybody that, if you do 20 different roasts, they're all being compared very similarly, whereas no other equipment can do that. And think of calibration like a rubber band and electronic components. 
the more you use electronics, the greater the component drift becomes. And when I say like a rubber band, imagine taking a rubber band and flexing it all the time. It loses elasticity. That's true of every electronic component. Well, you can recalibrate the system, and we recommend you do it about once every six months, so that you're always accurate to what the temperature is reading. Hmm, interesting. One thing I particularly like about this machine is that it has the water tank on top. And this machine is then really bringing the whole amount of water into that temperature that you want. In comparison to other machines where you have a tank with cold water and then you heat the water up. So you have the water really precisely at the temperature and then you let it through the shower head. Is this the reason why the machine has been constructed like this? We looked at function first. Our, our whole goal was to develop a system that accurately delivered water. But in order to make sure that your water is has continuity in temperature, we needed to bring the entire reservoir to one temperature. If you have a standard brewer, they have little boilers. Those boilers bring the cold water down, it boils, then it pushes the water out. Whereas what we do is we bring the entire body of water to one temperature, then we have small amounts of electricity going to the system to temperature maintenance it while it's in the in the brew cycle. So you're always within a very fine temperature range. No other brewer has this capability. Interesting. So really on top, it looks a bit like, like the inside of a water kettle. Mm -hmm. You have the whole amount of water within, this, um, within the container on a certain temperature. You have a thermocouple that it's within the water to measure the temperature. And then when it reaches the temperature, you let the water pre-soak and then you let it brew. That is correct. What, what we've tried to do is we recognize that you even have thermal zones within even that small container. So we're constantly providing just a little bit of heat to maintain this temperature range. And what we did so that you didn't have what we call overshoot, we literally, as the brewer, the water is being heated up, as soon as we reach a certain point, we actually cut the power so now we have what's called a glide-in to that temperature set point. So when you're actually brewing with this brewer, you will actually see the temperature. It could read 198, and it seems like it's stalling. Then it'll go 199 and 200. We want it to crawl to that set point. We don't want to blow past it. Think of it like a stop sign when you're driving your car. You want to gradually go to the stop sign. It's the same thing we're doing with this brewer. We want to stop at a certain set point. We don't want to blow past where, what were our desired temperatures. Then we just maintenance the heat until the very end, and then we use the thermal properties of the reservoir to keep the temperature at that level. Yeah, that's really smart. And then also with this machine, one thing I really love about it, due to these short spaces, or so due to the short ways the water have, has to flow through, you can really make sure the temperature then is also accurate when it gets into the powder because it's just like two centimeters or something like that from the container to the to the coffee. You'll always lose some thermal properties, mm. um, but it's minimal. The greatest thermal loss is actually from the grounds to the craft. Yeah. And that's true of every brewer made because the thermal properties of the actual coffee grounds will change purposefully what goes into the craft. The SCA, which we can meet any SCA standard out there, dictates what temperature you're allowed to bring the coffee into the carafe. People don't realize that the standards are that tight. Our carafe meets standards, our brewer actually meets the standards, and so we meet every gold standard out there. Hmm. And uh, is it complicated to use, or for whom would you recommend this machine to be used? The system, what we did is we made it multi-button to make the setup easy. Because too often you see people with just two or three buttons say, prompt, 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 move, 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 prompt, prompt, prompt. With us, what we wanted to do was give you multi-button setup. But once you've set it up, it's a single button solution. It's like any other brewer, just hit the start button. I know for myself, when I brew coffee at home, I brew at 200 degrees. I don't change the temperature. Now, if we're in competition settings, we will alter the temperature to more create a broader standard 
for the darker roast, for the naturals, versus the floral coffees that you may get. The, the um, oh gosh, I can't think of the word for the, the more florals, the, the uh, pacamaras. Mm -hmm. The pacamara coffees yeah. are going to be more floral. Yeah. Hmm. Is it, so precisely to say, when, when you say we do pre-settings, that you have to put in one time. What exactly, what kind of settings do you need to put in the machine when? Well, what you're doing is you're setting up the timer, the time of day. And if you do want to set your coffee up the night before, grind and so on and so forth, you have an auto. But we also give you the ability to put your altitude in. And why is that important? Because at altitude, water boils at different temperatures. And again, metric or imperial brain here, if you're at a thousand feet, you lose two degrees. So really your boil point becomes 210 degrees. When you put your altitude in, when we're calibrating the system, mm -hmm. what you are doing at that point is getting training the system to understand, okay, the maximum boil point is 210. Mm -hmm. Now we autocorrect for any deficiency in the electronic components. That's what calibration essentially does, right. is it corrects for deficiencies in the electronics that all products have. Mm. We want to get rid of it as much as humanly possible. Mm. Okay, so first time I get the, the machine, I set the time, then I set the altitude, and then I do a co calibration procedure one time all six months. Yeah, and that's it. And that's you, it. That's it. The, and the beauty of the system is you can unplug it and it will store all your settings except the time of day because that requires any, mm. any time you have a clock mm. in a portable device, yeah. you have to have a battery. Well, this mm. does not have a battery, mm. but every setting, your calibration, mm. your temperature control, all of it remain in mm. memory. It's mm. stored. You just have to set the time of day. Mm. And so we have memory control, microcontrollers. It, it's pretty, it's almost a mini computer in many mm. ways. And the machine does a pre-soak. It's got a pre-soak to where you can decide how much time you want to allow the water to rest on the grounds before your brew cycle starts. I know for me, I use 45 seconds. I roast my own coffee. And I find that that's a very good time to allow the water to saturate the grounds for them to become rehydrated, then start bringing water to the grounds. And it was actually, we use a standard about 12, 14 years ago, the SCA actually had a standard for how much water you put, used to put on the grounds. And we designed the systems. We literally looked at all the manuals on what the SCA required. And, and at that time, there was a different European company that did the standards testing. And we went, okay, we're going to follow and create a brewer that follows their standards to a T. And that's what we did. Hmm. So, so really the point about your machine is this temperature, the precision, the repeatability. I saw that um, your machine is being used at different events like the golden bean roasting competition. Why is it so popular in this professional use? Why, why is it particularly being used there? It's, again, it's temperature control. What we give people, you can put, and there are some fine brewers in the marketplace. I won't say that there aren't. But if you put 10 of my competitors' brewers all the same, and they are built in line, they're all going to act differently because you're dealing with the variables of a human or the electronics. Whereas with the brazen, once you calibrate it, you can set up 10 brewers, and they're all going to act the same. And that's why it's used in competitions. No one can do what we do with temperature control. Interesting. Well, this way, especially in competitions, people are spending a lot of money. Um, we did a competition in Columbus, Ohio about three weeks ago. Mm. And when people are spending $300 to enter their coffee for this roasting mm. competition, you want to treat them fairly. Yep. And that's why this brewer was chosen so we would do just that, so that everybody that entered knew that they were all being judged fairly. It's even when you do cuppings, when you do a kettle, when you start at one end, by the time you get to the other end, the temperature has changed on that water. Ever so minute, but it's going to change the results. And what we're trying to do is create continuity so that you create a standard that all the brewers are the same every time. The only factor that would change 
It's the coffee that you put into it. So you already, I want to take out some, I want to, to get some secrets from you when it comes to using the machine. So you already said that you're using the 45 second pre-soak. Mm -hmm. What temperatures are you most commonly using or are you using different temperatures for different kinds of coffees? It's, for me at my home, I stay with 200 degrees because even though you get, let's say a Guatemalan coffee, a Central American coffee, that's very rich, at 200 degrees you're gonna get that richness. But at 200 degrees, you're on a natural coffee, such as, let's say, the Ethiopians especially, you're not going to lose the fruit, and you're still going to get the sweetness. So you get the best of both worlds. That doesn't prevent anybody from simply pushing a few buttons and altering the temperature to where you can go up to 205. We've seen some coffees, and again, if you're, I, I'm a particular fan of the Guatemalan coffees and Colombian coffees, as Mary, but... If you've got a low acid coffee, at 205, you're gonna get the rich boldness coming out of it and not very much acid. If you've got a high acid coffee, the, more, the higher the temperature, the more you're going to bring out the acidity. Some people like that acidity, some people don't. This way, again, you can design the cup for your palate. We're not designing, we're designing a system that allows you to decide what you like. So in fact, what you would recommend you if I have the brazen brewer is that I would take a coffee, put it in, choose a temperature like, for example, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, make a brew, and then the next brew I use, for example, 202, 204, or 198, so that I try the different temperatures, and then I judge the, the coffee and um, define which temperature is the right for me. And, and, and that's exactly it. Mm. It's, I was in Australia years ago doing a demonstration, and a gentleman said, well, what happens if I want to do 203? I want a little fruit, but a little more boldness. And I said, you can do that. That's the beauty of the system. Mm. You decide what you want. No other brewer allows you this kind of control. Mm. Can you show me a bit like the components of the machine? So we have now here the whole brewer. Can you show me through how it's functioning, where the water is flowing, what are the different parts of the machine? Well, you've got a reservoir up top, and what you want to do is you will fill the reservoir. We recommend not doing less than one liter yeah. because you're going to get proper extraction, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I personally do 1.2 liters. There, mm -hmm. There's no re reason around it. Then what we do is we'll, we'll bring the temperature or the water to temperature. Then we've got a solenoid valve in here. That solenoid valve is actually magnetically controlled so that we give it a, a little burst of energy. It'll open up. It'll release a certain amount of water, approximately 10 milliliters per second. But that changes as head pressure changes. There's a lot of physics involved with this. So you go through the valve. Then it's going to go into a tiny shower head. Literally, you've only got about an inch and a half before it starts to hit the shower head. Then what we did... We understood that in order to get a great cup of coffee, you had to have, create a great shower head. So we spent six months just on the shower head, just to make sure. And most brewers went to what we call a conical, you know, a, a V-shaped basket. Flat bottom baskets lend themselves to be more even on their extraction. So we wanted to go with a flat bottom basket. The only way you could achieve good ground penetration or grounds, saturation, I should say, was with a full-size shower head. So you go through that, then we have a full-set thermal carafe to go along with it. Now, again, this carafe meets SCA standards, and we've had to custom design even the push-up valve because you will see others that have come out with this similar design on that. It was our design because we found that the temperature going into the carafe was best controlled by having this type of opening. It's, it's really, it's basic, but yet there's almost a mini computer in this because we have to have a power supply to control the microcontroller. So you, you need and to, to have memory. We actually have memory on board. So it, there's a lot of, com my background's 20 years in semiconductors. This is a mini computer, essentially. No other brewer does this stuff. And it's a mini computer with a shower head that you have been working on for six months. What is so special about the shower head? Well, it, what we did is we, because we're a gravity feed, we had to understand how gravity would affect 
the shower head. And water migrates to openings. Think of it like anything. Water migrates downhill. Well, we had to actually, inside the shower head, create little mini barriers so that as one area filled up, the water would move to other areas mm. because you're dealing with gravity. So it's important that you, one, have a level surface. But this way, the shower would be in, on all the grounds. You're not going to get water coming out of all the holes simultaneously, yeah. but you don't need to. Yeah. What you're trying to do is get all the holes at some point in time mm. to have water going through it so that your grounds are properly or even saturated. saturated. That's correct. Wow. Okay. I mean, you're going to get some small dimpling, mm. but it's going to be very... Uh, mm. Depends upon how you do your grinds, too. Mm. Overly fine grinds uh, tend to not... Mm. You're going to have what we call a little float to them. Mm. I like to do about the size of kosher salt. Mm. And then with the machine, um, you can use either a gold filter or a paper filter. Yeah, what, what we wanted to do is... And, and again, we, we've... We provide the gold filter at no charge, um, or you can use paper filters. We, what we tried to do, and again, this goes back to the original design, we have an exceptionally deep grounds basket. Yeah. It actually takes 10 cup paper filters, even though it's only an eight cup brewer, because we, we wanted to design a brewer that would accept freshly roasted coffee. Freshly roasted coffee, you have what's called bloom. And with the old style, if you have a straight eight cup, it will bloom outside the actual grounds basket. We wanted to create space for that bloom to occur so you can use fresher coffees. And then uh, does it make a taste difference if I use the filter or the gold filter? Paper filter or gold filter? With a gold filter, you're going to get a little bit of the coffee in, you know, in the sense of the actual powder, yeah. in, in the fine grinds, what we call sediment, whatever, but you're going to get mouthfeel. And a lot of people love that. They love what it does on the tongue. I myself, Americans are very, um, we like to use paper filters more often than not. But again, Europeans prefer mm. more often mm. to use the gold filter. And so it's, it's really about, all about personal preferences. Mm. Again, we've tried to design a system that you decide how you want it. We're not trying to tell you how to do it. We're just giving you the options. And that's what we've tried to build. Okay. And you made a flat button filter. Why did you choose the flat button filter? Every, the, reason, the reason people went to a V-shaped filter or grounds basket is because their shower heads were so bad, the only way they could get most of the water on the bulk of the grounds was to have a V-shape. Because if you imagine you've just got a little bit shower head that's only that big, and yet you've got a ground basket that is three and a half inches across or three inches across, you're obviously only hitting the center. So by having a V-shape, you actually hit the core. Well, what you invariably have done is you have under-extracted on the outer edges and over-extracted in the middle. That's why we went to flat bottom. You get a sweeter cup and more even on the extraction. Okay. Extraction's everything. And this is why you're seeing more and more people go to a multi-hole shower head like what we developed. Mm. Because they were recognizing it. If, I used to call it the, the coffee sinkhole. That when you'd pull the grounds basket out on, and we're talking four and five hundred dollar coffee brewers, you'd pull it out and it's sunk in the middle and it's high ridge around the edge. Over extracted, under extracted. So yeah, to, to sum everything up, you really constructed a brewer which is perfectly consistent in temperature, where you can even calibrate the temperature according to the heights so that you have precise readings, where you have really the proximity between the water container and then also the, the shower head and the, and the coffee so that you really are precise with the temperature that gets into the coffee. You have a shower head that then really evenly distributes the water into this flat bottom filter. So it's all then really about um, even extraction and bringing the best out of a coffee. We looked at how, and, and this started primarily because we build home coffee roasters as well, but we looked at people spending a great deal of money, whether or not they roast their own coffee or going out and buying coffee, 
They're spending a lot of money to get a great cup of coffee. We wanted to bring them the opportunity to get the most out of what the money they're spending on so that you really enjoy it. If somebody describes a coffee as having floral notes or fruity notes or chocolate notes or even tea-like notes, that you're going to actually be able to enjoy what a professional roaster or yourself have done and you get the most out of it. That, I mean, we're all about your pleasure in that we want you to enjoy a great cup of coffee consistently and with all the coffees you may try. Awesome. So, Joe, can you show me a bit the buttons and what are the different functions of those buttons here? We have a standby mode to save energy, which no, none of us want to consume more power yeah. when we don't need to. So what you want to do to set up a brewer is quite simple. You hit the mode button. Now, what you want to do is, is you have a standby mode for setting up the brewer. This is actually the wake up time for the next day. If you want to start your coffee at, oh, I'm in Europe. Six in the morning, just set it for six. Next mode is the pre-soak time. Mm -hmm. How much time do you want to set for pre-soak? Now this, for some reason, is set at 3.30. You actually want to reduce that. Then you go into set. Now I can set more specific. I like to do 45 seconds. And once you set these features, you never have to go back. Yeah. So it's just a one time. Next is temperature. Now you can go between Celsius or Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I prefer Fahrenheit because it's more accurate. There's more, it's finer. finer, In, finer. You have about 1.8 mm -hmm. Fahrenheit mm -hmm. per one Celsius. So yeah. if you're looking for real accuracy, you want to do it in Fahrenheit. But it's entirely up to the user. You can use either or. The next is the actual time of day. Mm -hmm. So it, again, you go through the series of prompts. Then comes your altitude. Yeah. Now, I live where I live in San Diego. I just set it to 1,000 feet because yeah. I'm actually at like 950. Now, what you want to do once you're at that point, you fill the reservoir up halfway. Yeah. We have a calibration line. Yeah. And literally just press start. And what the system's going to do is literally bring the water to boil yeah. and determine the boil point and yeah. then auto-correct any deficiencies in the electronics. Yeah. Because we have code to recognize this. Mm. See, it, it, it's really a smart piece of equipment. Yeah, so like that, I'm then always consistent when it comes to the temperature reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that simple. Once you've calibrated and you're done, it becomes a single button brewer like any other brewer. Just it's just, it's it's just it's a setup mm -hmm. and it's all for accuracy. And you can see it's really simple. Great. Thanks a lot, Joe, for this, for this great brewer. I knew you, of course, from the roasting machine that probably every home roaster in this world knows. But um, I'm really excited about this brewing machine even more when you explain me everything, how it's working. And I really have to say thank you for all the efforts and everything you're doing for the coffee community and also for coming to Switzerland to show us the roasting machine and also the brewing machine. Well, it's my pleasure to be here, Ingo. Um, it's an industry I love. It's an industry that's amazing. And we just want to bring a quali quality products out to people but not have them overpriced. We want to have products that anybody can buy and afford and enjoy. And that's what we're trying to achieve every day. We work on this diligently. Great. Thank you for having me.